Good whatever time it might be for all you lovely people out there. I'm Eggnog, your everyday LEGO Star Wars enthusiast, and today I'd like to talk about spring-loaded shooters. In the year 2014, LEGO decided that flick fire missiles were no longer fun. So they created the spring-loaded sh shooter, and they slapped it onto every set that came out that year. Just to rattle them off real quick, we had the Jedi Interceptor, the V-Wing, the Vulture Droid, the Droid Gunship, the AT-AP, the Tri-Fighter, the AV-7 Cannon, the Police Gunship, the Phantom, the Snowspeeder, the B-Wing, the Jedi Scout Fighter, the AT-AT, the Star Destroyer, and the MTT. They all had flick fire missiles, and this was a pattern that LEGO was going to keep up. Nowadays, it's hard to find a playset any year past 2014 that doesn't have flick fire missiles in them. And I think that's for pretty good reason, but we'll talk about that later. Also, 2014 was a pretty stacked year. Those are some good sets. This here is a spring-loaded shooter. I'm sure any LEGO fan is very familiar with this. You just load it in. A very lightly pushed down here, and it flicks off. It flicks off with some serious force, which is what encouraged LEGO to promote safety and wellness a little bit. That's why in any LEGO instructions, you can see here a little sign telling you to not shoot anybody, don't want to take anybody's eye out. Of course, as a child, I was very rebellious and wanted to shoot them at people. I didn't have any really people to shoot them with, but I made do. So the spring-loaded shooter was made, and it was up to LEGO designers to use it properly. Now, I think it would be fun to take a look at some of the great uses of spring-loaded shooters and some of the very lazy ones, and a few of the ones that kind of lie in between. Looking here at the X-Wing, loading up those spring-loaded shooters, shows that they were just kind of haphazardly thrown on to each end of the wing here, which looks all right from the front. It doesn't look perfect. It's not really, it would be cool if you could have them maybe shooting out where they should be, maybe find some way to integrate this into the cannon. But whatever, they just slack it onto the bottom of the wing. But this even arises even more of a problem when you flip it around and you see that now your X-Wing has two massive red lightsabers sticking out of its back end. And then flipping it over, it also doesn't look pleasant on the bottom, so bottom side here, just having some weird studs, a weird gray block sticking out of your X-Wing's wings. Lego took the same approach, putting them onto the scythe. Just stick them in. It's just right there. You no know, thought was put into the location of it, whatever. One on both sides. Although this one is a little bit better, I might add, because this part isn't like sticking out. It's completely hidden when the wings are in landed position. But still, would have been nice for them to just not stick it right there. Here's a real bad example on the Republic hover tank. Loading this in here will reveal that it completely limits the motion of the cannon, making it only able to come up so far. That's when you know you've really messed up, is when your play feature is limiting the play of your Lego set. You see, we fire it off. Also, again, the massive red laser sticking out of the back does not look very good. You flick it off, and you can see now that the range is, is far better. But again, just not very good thinking on Lego. Again, just something they slapped on there last minute. My scythe just broke, that's a problem. Here's an interesting example here with the TIE Fighter. You load it up. Loading it up is cool because you can see the flick fire missiles are located in the in the proper area on the ship. That's the cannon blaster locations, which is very cool. It's very cool when the play feature like also works as the display sort of. But you flip it around and again you have these weird little kind of laser looking things sticking out. This is obviously of course so you can flick them down. But it still would have been nice to have them covered up and have maybe a little lever that pushes them down because once you shoot them off you have this weird gap too in the back of your TIE fighter. Again this all kind of adds up to this being probably the most lackluster TIE fighter build they ever made. Enough with the complaining. Alright, I hear you. Let me show you what I think 
is the gold standard for what all spring-loaded shooters should be. May I present to you the Resistance A-Wing. Now looking at it like this, you couldn't even see anything. I mean, it is just, there's nothing here. You flip it around, boom, there were the spring-loaded shooters, just hidden, real tiny, not causing a single problem on the ship. You're not losing any display, you're not losing any display value for the value of the play feature. So you're thinking, how do you launch these off? Well, it's quite simple. Right here, you press down, when they shoot off. How cool is that? Always found that uh, play features like this work best when you're not actually pressing down on the, the laser itself, but you're pressing out on a different part of the build. Another gold star here is the Razor Crest. You load it up. All you have to do, it's very hidden. It's just tucked away there. All you have to do, press down right here and it launches off. I mean, how cool is that? Although I will say with this one, when you don't have spring-loaded shooters in, sometimes the little lever to push them down droops down a little bit, which doesn't look the greatest, but I still think this was a very good design and I, I, I applaud, I applaud the LEGO designers for this one. The ATST, the ATST Raider, also the Hoth ATST also has a play feature very similar to this, but I'm using this one as the example. Again, as does very well with stud shooters, they're just hidden way back in there. Right there is the perfect spot. That's exactly where you'd want the spring-loaded shooter to be coming out of. That's the canonical spot, you know? It's all perfect. You move the head around. You see right here, you got these little two things. You just push down, real responsive, and it launches off the uh, missiles. Oh. Bam. Real fun. So in the 20 an 20th anniversary slave one, if you're holding it, on the handle here, you have these two little red levers here, and pulling them down will fire off the spring-loaded shooters right above the handle. I mean, it's so cool. You can fly the ship, fire the spring-loaded shooters. It's almost like it's a Nerf gun. This has obviously got to be one of the best examples of spring-loaded shooters that there are. Flipping, oh, flipping it around to the front, you reveal it has two massive zits on the front. Again, just a sad, uh, sad moment of Lego ruining what would have been just the most incredible display piece by just adding these two weird red blots in the front. I think it would have been cooler if they were maybe just sticking off to the side where they weren't so much just in the way. It just looks very silly to me, and as much as I love this set, that's got to be one of my biggest complaints with it. Now, there is one more type of spring-loaded shooter. Not the kind of spring-loaded shooter that the Jedi would tell you about. One far more powerful, and that is, of course, whatever you call this thing. These were very similar to spring-loaded shooters, except for they were just heavy-duty. Super big, they'd come flying at you, they got this Technic rod. These were fun. Although they were only in a few sets back in the day. Mostly I'm thinking of the TIE Bomber, this Slave 1 right here, and maybe a Droid Cannon back in the day. I can't quite remember. But, uh, I mean, these could cause some serious damage. It would make sense why LEGO wouldn't want you shooting these at people's faces. Of course, I was rebellious as a kid, and I found my way around that. Anyway, everybody, those are my thoughts on spring-loaded shooters. This is kind of an interesting video, but uh, I thought it would be fun to make, and it's something I wanted to talk about. Um, on a more serious matter, thank you all so much. Uh, we're almost at 200 subscribers. That's so cool to me that all you guys thought my content was worth subscribing for. It really means the world to me. I appreciate it so much. And I really hope to see you guys in the next video, review, whatever I decide to do. But until then, stay safe.